Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon if you want to keep the channel alive, and like and subscribe for more star power next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Johnny Cage from Mortal Kombat, just a regular human actor with enough fighting skill to fight in the Mortal Kombat tournament, and enough charisma that his last name uses a strange symbol. It sounds like a K, but it's a half circle? What the hell is that thing? Break your breaking face tonight! Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we gotta bust a nut, or even two of them. Yeah, the first goal is the nut punch. You think I'm not aiming for the nut punch? Next, we need to become a thespian. Fighting in a Mortal Kombat tournament is such a risky endeavor. It's safe to have a fallback, like being a movie star. Finally, we need that green energy, because you're like the chosen one of some ancient fighting cult. I don't know, don't really like that addition to the lore. I prefer the idea that he's just Jean-Claude Van Damme and they couldn't afford the rights. Oh, how the turn tables. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Dexterity will be number one. Your movies aren't known for their stellar performances, they're known for their kick-ass ass-kicking. Charisma next, still gotta be charming as the leading man. Wisdom after that, if you're gonna dodge some hits, it might help to be perceptive. Follow that with constitution, if you dump this in Mortal Kombat, you lose in 30 seconds, instead of like, 32 seconds. Strength is a bit low, you're not gonna outlift Sheng anytime Sung. We'll dump intelligence. Everyone loves Johnny, but he is dumb as bricks. Johnny is a human, variant that up a bit so you can grab a feat. Of course you can grab a feat, you're very flexible. Tough gives you 2 HP for every level you have, so you don't die. Bump your dexterity and your wisdom with your 2 free points, perception for your skill of choice, and the athlete background for athletics and acrobatics. Gotta be a physical specimen if you're gonna do the splits in a cool way. We'll kick things off as a bard though for 3 free skills from the bard list, performance, persuasion, and sleight of hand. I don't know where you pull that Oscar from, so you might have sleight of another part of human anatomy as well. You have bardic inspiration letting you help your fellow combatants with a d6 to add to ability checks, saving throws, or attack rolls. Hey, there's actually an assist feature now. That's neat. We mostly need some bard spells and cantrips. Vicious Mockery is an obvious favorite, forcing a wisdom saving throw on creatures of your choice. Failing that, they take a d4 of psychic damage and have disadvantage on their next attack roll. The first Mortal Kombat is Mental Combat. Light makes a light, so you can see in the dark with your bad human eyes, but Color Spray is a first level spell that will let you make a spotlight a bit more practical. Roll 6d10, then blind that many creatures worth of HP and a 15 foot cone in front of you. Imagine beating someone's ass with flash photography. Silvery Barbs gives a creature disadvantage on attack rolls, ability checks, or a saving throw, and then another creature gets advantage on an ability check or saving throw. Even more mental warfare. Charm Person forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature, failing that they're charmed for an hour. Maybe you don't have to combat mortally. And finally, Heroism will give a creature immunity to fear and temporary HP equal to your charisma modifier every turn. It can be scary fighting a bunch of ninjas, but not for you. They're in the cage with with you. Now we'll jump to Monk, which is funny because monks are good at jumping. Martial Arts lets you make unarmed attacks that deal 1d4 plus your dexterity modifier, and you can make one with your bonus action after you make one with your action. It's, uh, it's punching. You'll get punched less with unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor. Second level monks get key points they can use to do cool green stuff like Flurry of Blows to make two unarmed attacks instead of one with your bonus action, burn a bit of meter, and do a little more damage. Patient Defense lets you dodge as a bonus action for invincibility from the green green stuff. Step of the Wind lets you dash or disengage as a bonus action to get out safely. It also doubles your jump distance, but jumping is not a safe way to disengage. You need to fix that habit. You'll also be a little bit faster with unarmored movement making you faster while you're keeping it casual. Tryhards showing up at battle armor or whatever. Don't they know fighting is all about looking cool? Third level monks can choose a monastic tradition. Sun Soul monks get to make radiant sun bolts. You can fire off with a 30 foot range. They deal your monk dying in radiant damage and you can make two with your bonus action if you spend a key point. Now you can throw the green stuff to. It doesn't just have to coat your fist. It also can't coat your fists for three more levels. So it's good that we're not committed to that. You can also deflect missiles, letting you reduce the damage of incoming ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level as a reaction. Imagine blocking in Mortal Kombat. Couldn't be me. If you drop it to zero, you can even throw it back with a key point though. Fourth level monks get slow fall, letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction, which should help you in the cutscenes where you do the other adventure stuff. You also get an ability score improvement. Start working with your dexterity first. It helps with punching and dodging. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks with your action instead of one, or up to four with a flurry of blows. Now that's what I call a combo. And all of those hits will do a little more damage since your monk die bumps up to a d6 here, which also means better lasers. Stunning Strike lets you force a constitution saving throw on a creature by spending a key point when you hit them. Failing that, they're stunned until the end of your next
next turn. Just drop down and hit them in the nuts. What if they don't have nuts, you ask? Well, whatever is between someone's legs, getting punched there hurts. Johnny Cage is all about equality. Six level monks get key empowered strikes, making your attacks magical in terms of overcoming resistances. You can also make burning hands with your searing arc strike. I don't care about that. I just wanted lasers earlier and key empowered strikes here. It's a bad way to use your key points. Don't do that. Seventh level monks get evasion, so you'll take half damage from failed deck saves and no damage from successful ones. Good option if you get sent to the nether realm. It's basically fire, the plane. You also get stillness of mind to remove effects of charming or frightening as an action on your turn. Now you don't need heroism, but maybe just still have it up. It's pretty good. Eighth level monks get another ability score improvement so you can cap off your dexterity modifier and be the best fighter earth realm has to offer. Wait, we're monks, not fighters, unless we went to fighter. Fighters can choose a fighting style like unarmed fighting to deal a D8 of damage with your unarmed attacks as long as you have two free hands. You also deal a d4 of damage when you grapple a creature once per turn if you want to do some throws. Throws can be cool. Second win lets you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. Should keep you up for round two. Second level fighters get action surge to make a second action once per short rest. That's four attacks in a round or up to six with a flurry of blows. That is a combo. Third level fighters can choose an archetype. Champions get improved critical to critically hit on a 19 or a 20. That's going to be a nuts amount of damage. Really balls to the wall. Testicle. Fourth level fighters get another ability score improvement, both the charisma for better spells, with the very few spells you can cast with your one bard level. Fifth level fighters get nothing. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement, keep working that charisma to be everyone's favorite actor. Seventh level champions are remarkable athletes, something you add half your proficiency bonus to any strength, dexterity, or constitution check you are not proficient with. That does include initiative rolls, so it should help you get the first hit in. Eighth level champions get another ability score improvement, so you can cap off your charisma and land all the vicious mockeries you want. Ninth level fighters get an to reroll one failed saving throw per long rest. Don't go nuts with it, but you can use it on death saving throws to keep your spine where it used to be. 10th level champions get another fighting style. Go for superior technique to get 1d6 superiority die and a maneuver. Guess we'll go for a menacing attack. It lets you add your superiority die to the damage. That's the only thing I care about. It also forces a wisdom saving throw on the creature you hit. Failing that, they're frightened of you until the end of your next turn. Really just wanted the extra damage to come out after you know the hit. That way you can save it for a crit and get to 2d6. Also, yes, unarmed attacks or weapon attacks even though they aren't made with weapons i don't think you're stupid if you thought that maybe a little stupid if you try to correct someone and you're wrong but more importantly the rule is stupid and bad i'm against the rule not against you our capstone is the 11th level of fighter for another extra attack that's three total six with an action surge eight with a flurry of blows a nice and respectable combo game now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is first you got a big long combo string that you can dish out to one person who can only walk forward or backward or distributed to a crowd i'd imagine it's probably going to be the former in your line of work. You also don't have to worry about supernatural resistances with key empowered strikes, making sure you can hit anyone anytime. Finally, big charisma. It's always fun. Just talking good is so valuable. For weaknesses, a one level dip to a caster isn't that bad of an idea, but it would be better if we chose druid or cleric, since charisma over wisdom on a monk multi-class is obviously not streamlined. You're also not very smart. Understanding the lore could be hard. It already would be with mortal combat lore. They just reset the freaking universe. Finally, sun soul is just straight up bad. It's so bad people think Monk is bad as a whole. Pick anything else except four elements, just not those two. The other subclasses rule. Or do it! Who cares? You don't have to be the best. Just be the coolest and punch people really fast. Maybe watch out for more classically trained fighters though. Not sure you'd do well against someone who's trained in the blade. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We're still making these for whatever reason. The reason is actually the Patreon, so subscribe to stop the series from dying and check out Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.